Show that the vector field is a conservative vector field and then find its potential function if it exists. So we want to recall that if we are given a vector field f defined by components fg, so we have this vector field in R2, that we have our conservative vector field test. So if the partial derivative of g with respect to x is equal to the partial derivative of f with respect to y, then f is a conservative vector field. Or in other words, we can rewrite our vector field f as the gradient of a potential function phi. So we want to apply this test to what is given and then proceed from there. So we have the vector field in R2. We can see that our component f is defined as y, sine of xy, and that our component g is defined as x times sine of xy. So we want to take the partial derivative of f with respect to y. So we need a product rule here. So this is going to be 1 multiplied by sine of xy plus y multiplied by the derivative of the trig function, which is cosine of xy multiplied by x. So this leaves us with sine of xy plus xy times cosine of xy. And then very similarly, with our component g, we want to find the partial derivative of g with respect to x. And again, we are using a product rule. So I have 1 times sine of xy plus x multiplied by cosine of xy. And since we're differentiating with respect to x, y is constant. So we multiply by y. And this leaves us with the sine of xy plus xy cosine of xy, and we are delighted, and we see that the partial derivative of f with respect to y is the same as the partial derivative of g with respect to x. So therefore, since the partial derivative of f with respect to y equals the partial derivative of g with respect to x, we know that our vector field is conservative, and we're going to be able to find its corresponding potential function. So we are now ready to find the potential function. So we want to keep in mind that the gradient of phi contains the components of the partial derivatives of phi with respect to x and y. And this is what is given to us. This is y times sine of xy. And then we have x times sine of xy. So at this point, you want to go ahead and pick your favorite partial derivative or the easier partial derivative and integrate with respect to that variable. So I am going to start by choosing the partial derivative of phi with respect to x. And we want to integrate this partial with respect to x to find the potential function phi of xy. And we want to make note that this includes the arbitrary function c of y. So just like with antiderivatives, we have the constant plus c, here with multivariables, we've got to have the arbitrary constant function, if you will, with the missing variable. So here I have the potential function phi of xy is equal to the integral of the partial derivative of phi with respect to x dx. So plugging in what we have, this is the integral of y 
times sine of x, y, dx, and we are ready to integrate. So this is going to leave us with minus y cosine of x, y, all divided by y, plus c of y. We can see that our y terms will cancel here. And so we are left with our initial potential function, phi of x, y, being equal to minus cosine of x, y, plus c of y. And this is all well and good. Kittens want to learn math. But we think to ourselves here, what is c of y? So that is step two. So to find c of y, we want to compute the partial derivative of phi with respect to y, and then equate it to g. And so we'll keep in mind here that since our vector field is conservative, this implies that the components of our vector field f corresponds to the components of the gradient of phi. So we can see that g here is equal to the partial derivative of phi with respect to y. Just as a friendly reminder. All right, so we are now taking the partial derivative of our potential function found in step one with respect to y. So we take the ddy of both sides. And this leaves us with the partial derivative of phi with respect to y is equal to minus a minus sine of xy multiplied by the derivative of the inside, which is just x, plus c prime of y. And we recall here that since g is equivalent to the partial derivative of phi with respect to y, we can say that x times sine of xy plus c prime of y is equal to our component g, which is defined or given to us as x sine of xy. And solving for c prime of y here, we subtract x times sine of xy from both sides which leaves us with c prime of y is equal to zero. So step three, we're ready now to integrate the derivative of c with respect to y with respect to y to find the arbitrary function c of y. So we have that c of y is equal to the integral of the derivative of c of y with respect to y or the integral of 0 dy, which leaves us just with 0 plus an arbitrary constant c. So we now have that the arbitrary function c of y is just defined by the arbitrary constant c. And we can now take this here, and we're going to substitute it back into our initial potential function here for c of y to attain the beautiful final answer. So you can say that, therefore, our potential function, phi of xy, is defined as minus cosine of xy plus c. And now, before we go ahead and box this up as our final answer here, we always want to be sure to check. And we're checking our potential function here. We want to make sure that the components of our vector field are in fact equivalent to the gradient of phi. So to do this, all we need to do is take the partial derivatives of this potential function with respect to x and y. So we have the partial derivative of phi with respect to x is minus a minus sine of xy multiplied by y, and the plus c just goes to zero, leaving us with y times sine of xy and then taking the partial derivative of the potential function with respect to y, this again is going to be minus a minus sine of xy 
this time multiplied by x since we're in, uh, differentiating with respect to y plus 0 which simplified gives us x times sine of xy which gets us very excited because we notice that this is the f component of our vector field and the second partial derivative is the g component of our vector field and so we have confirmed that this potential function is our beautiful final answer.